What is it that makes one business analyst more successful than another? How is one person able to tackle new complex projects with confidence while someone else struggles, stumbles, and delivers inferior results? Along with knowledge of the theory, experience with tools and techniques, we talk about a more elusive concept, your mindset. I call it the business analyst mindset. I'm Yulia Kasarenko, and in this series of videos, we are exploring each of the principles of the BA mindset. Today, we will talk about leadership and the next principle, lead and facilitate. Wait a minute, I'm not a leader. The project manager is, you might say, or our sponsor or product owner is calling all the shots. Aren't they supposed to lead and tell me what to do? Here is the thing. You, a business analyst, have a special role. Yes, you may not be managing people in a traditional sense, but you are the link between the groups of people that don't always understand each other. You are accountable for helping them communicate, reach that understanding, and work better together. You help manage the relationships, explain, clarify, and navigate different opinions and agendas. A business analyst is a classic example of a leader without authority, and an influencer without a seniority. What exactly does it mean? As a business analyst, you will take on a variety of leadership roles, planning and leading requirements analysis process, organizing diverse groups, managing expectations, helping technical and business people communicate, training and preparing business groups for upcoming changes. You will need a hat stand for the many hats that you will wear, perhaps like this. You will need to be a facilitator, a mediator, a change agent, and sometimes a devil's advocate. Let's break down the leadership part. How would you as a business analyst do it? You will need to constantly manage relationships. Play the intermediary between the people who can't quite communicate with each other and need your help. Be a diplomat when different sides argue or have conflicting goals. Your role will be that of a neutral negotiator that helps resolve conflicts. Sometimes a person very senior to you may be asking for something unreasonable that doesn't quite make sense, and you will have to influence them subtly and carefully. You may have to give them a slight nudge to help them in the right direction or ask just the right question. You have to influence without criticizing others, starting with understanding their needs and positions. You must listen with empathy. Even if something doesn't make sense on the surface, there may be a deeper reason why, and without empathy, we will not get collaboration. You may have to broach sensitive subjects and deal with touchy issues and even deliver the bad news. All of this is dealing with human beings, and that's a big part of business analyst's job. Another important part of this is facilitating meetings. A business analyst will lead requirements workshops, user story mapping, joint application development meetings. These are all meetings of people. The goal of a meeting is to get people together to exchange information, solve problems, and make decisions. What is your role in this? Your role is to facilitate effective communication among people who need to achieve a common goal in the most efficient way. How exactly do you do that? Facilitation is a skill and an art. Here are just a few tips. Always start with why a meeting is required. Is it required at all? If it's not necessary, don't waste everybody's time. What are the objectives? Is there a clear goal for the meeting? Invite the right people. Respect everybody's time. Smaller meetings are also more efficient, so you have to be strategic about it. Learn to manage hostile stakeholders and those who tend to be negative. They may be disruptive, but you need to determine why. Don't forget to listen to them as they may have a valid reason or concern. Whenever you organize a meeting, be prepared, set the right example, and expect the same from others. If the group is not prepared for a meeting, then it may become a waste of time. And practice effective facilitation. There are many resources, books, and courses to help you learn that. Make that meeting flow, nudge when the conversation gets stuck, ask the right questions at the right time, and make sure every participant can contribute. Finally, find a strategy to record the main points without slowing the discussion down, and then follow up. 
to conclude, the ability to lead and facilitate is crucial. You may find this side of your job most challenging, but without it, you cannot be successful. With a business analyst mindset, you have the right foundation to become a true leader, a leader who strives to do the right thing and leads others to do the right thing and knows what the right thing is. If you would like to explore these topics more, check out my book, Business Analyst, A Profession and a Mindset. This book will prepare you to take on the accountability for understanding business needs and leading others to find the best way to solve business problems. There is a whole chapter in the book on just meeting facilitation and various skills and tips that will help you acquire this skill. And again, facilitation skills are universally valued and you can take them with you whenever your career path takes you. A good leader doesn't have to be senior to every other person in the room. You can lead as a diplomat and encourage collaboration without domination with your personality and approach. As Ken Blanchard said, the key to successful leadership today is influence, not authority. The final thought I want to leave you with is this. Do not turn down leadership opportunities. Don't say, oh, I'm just a business analyst. Instead, think, I can take on a new challenge. I'm a business analyst after all. Thank you for watching. If you want to continue learning with me about the business analyst mindset, then move on to the next video.